Hi everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and today I get the pleasure and the honor of recording a video for you of a pattern that we have out there. The pattern is actually done by Puka who created, um, is the designer that she has created the actual bead, the Arcos and the Minos and the Kiop and then the new Eos bead. So Puka was kind enough to give us a bunch of patterns to give to you guys. Unfortunately, she is French, so a lot of you do not speak French. Um, so you're having some trouble, some of you, following some of the directions. Her video, or her tutorials are uh, picture-based, and you can download them if you order any of our products from us online to make them. We have them to download with the purchase of those products. But because they are in French, we asked um, permission from Puka to see if we were able to do some of them as videos, and she was nice enough to say yes. So, the first one that I'm producing for you guys is the Mino necklace or earrings, and it's a pretty necklace slash earring design that uses the Arco beads, the new EO speed, and then some 15O and 8O C beads, as well as a little crystal or something in the middle. In her ideas at the very end of her pattern, she also has a pair of earrings that has a little tassel on each earring end hanging from them. For me, they're rather large for earrings, so I decided to do it as a pendant instead. But instead of her pendant that she just ends at the bottom, I decided to use her idea to have the tassel here at the bottom. So if you need any of these materials to do the Mino bracelet or a necklace or earrings, whichever you decide to do, you can look on the left hand side here and we'll do a little drop down that you can order them from us online. The Mina design for the pen, or the Mino design for the pendant, you are going to need some Arco speeds and you're looking at eight Arcos. I'll be working with the Crystal Lab full Arco speed. The Arco says a three hole arch bead and we're actually only going to be using the exterior holes of the Arco speed. So you're going to need eight of what other color you decide to use. In addition to the Arcos, we are using the EO speed, which the EO speed is basically a two hole bar that has a little bit of a tiny, tiny bit of a dip there in the middle. And we are going to be using uh, 12 of those or 10 of those per project, depending on kind of what design you want to do. She keeps the top of hers open here. For the actual one that I do with you guys, I'm going to show you just to vary a tiny bit from the actual pattern here, how to close off the top and attach to the top as well. So that's your Arcos and your Eos that were designed to fit wonderfully together. In addition to that, you have some seed beads on the design. There are 15 OC beads and there are 8 OC beads. The 8 OC beads are kind of here along the outer edge and you are going to be using seven or eight of those 8 OC beads. I'm using the matte silver lined Capri Blue. And then for my 15 O's to do kind of a blue pop with these kind of neutral tones, I am using the Mayuki Opaque Turquoise Green Luster. So it's a nice opaque turquoise color for the 15 O's. And those will go around the outer edge wherever you see the gold beads here on my design. In addition to that, I threw in a crystal in the middle. You can do a three millimeter crystal. You can do a Monty. It's kind of up to you. I'm using a three by four millimeter Potomac crystal rondelle in the aqua color. In addition to that, I have a tassel because I'm going to do a tassel at the end of mine again. I really like the look of this. And the tassel I have is the turquoise sunrise tassel. tassel. It's an inch and a half tassel. And I think it'll go nicely with the different colors. Because I am doing it as a pendant and kind of connecting the top and the bottom tassel, you'll need some wire. Whether or not you want to use eye pins or just plain 22 gauge wire, that's up to you. I had the eye pins handy, so I'll use those, um, but you can use plain 22 gauge wire as well. And then whether or not you want to attach it on a chain, you want to do something beaded, check out the rest of the Mino pattern. You could do something more beaded on the sides. That's kind of up to you. To hold the whole thing together, I am using some chain. On the example is the uh, small Italian cable chain in the brass color. I'll be using the small Italian chain in the silver color. And I'm going to make the necklace long enough that it simply slips over my head. So it'll be linked at the very end with some of this wire here. You won't have to worry about an actual clasp. For your tools for the project, we are going to need one needle, size 10 or 12, is not going to matter which one. 
some thread. In the example piece, I use green thread. Here, I'm gonna use the white wildfire beading thread in 0 0.006. And we have some tools handy. For the tools, you want a needle nose pliers, a round nose pliers, a wire cutter, and then I have a thread burner that I always keep handy as well. So to get started, we're going to be starting with the Arcos, the EOS, and the 15 OC beads. So to get started with the project, I have about 36 inches of thread on my needle, and again, it's a size 10 needle. And I'm simply gonna hold the end of the thread. I'm not worrying about a bead stop. Um, the instructions that I will go upon here will be exactly the same as the picture tutorial, so that way if you do wanna follow along with the tutorial, you can do that as well. Also check out all of Puka's other designs. She has some beautiful designs with all different types of beads. So to start out, we're gonna be doing the center of the design, those arcos kind of facing outward. Again, we're only gonna be using the outer holes of the arcos. So they have three holes. We're not using that central hole. We're just using the outer edge ones. To start out, you're gonna go through one of the arcos beads so that you're, it's facing out through the bottom hole. Take it the whole way down and just pinch in your hand about two extra inches of thread. Once you're out the top, grab a 15, an EOS, and a 15 and then come back down through the arcos through the third hole. That's gonna pull that EOS right in between the arcos. Along the side then here, we're gonna add our next one of our arcos, which is also going to face outward. So again, we're gonna go through the left-hand side when the arcos is facing kind of like a watermelon slice. When we get out the top, Add your 15, EOS 15, and then back down through the right-hand side. On the next bead then, do the exact same thing up through the left-hand side of that watermelon slice. Seed bead, EOS seed bead, and back down through the right-hand side of the EO. So we're repeating this four times to get that central piece. You can see that it's kind of sitting a little bit off. Don't worry about that too much because we're going to go in and we'll actually force it to sit correctly. Next one again, watermelon slice on the left hand side. Seed bead, EOS, seed bead, down the right hand side. From there, I'm going to tie these two thread ends together. And that's going to create my nice little box. Go ahead and pull tightly when tying together. And do about two knots. When I set that down then, it will actually stay in its nice formation. The tail I am gonna leave on, so I'm not grabbing my thread burner at this point. I'm leaving the tail on because I will eventually tie off onto that tail as well. When I'm on the corner here, I'm going to go diagonal and add in my crystal. So my crystal again is a three by four millimeter rondelle. I'm gonna add a seed bead, crystal, and seed bead. I'm at the top left hand corner and just because this is how she has it on the pattern, I'm gonna flip it so that it appears that I'm in the bottom left-hand corner. When I'm in that bottom corner, I'm gonna take the thread and needle from one corner to the opposite corner. When I go to the opposite corner then, I'm gonna go up through the arcos on that opposite corner going up through the third hole. That will lay that crystal and seed bead mix right there in the middle. When I'm out the top here, this is when I actually get to put on my second row of beads. When looking at it here, the second row of beads are gonna be the arcos and then the point of the EOS beads. 
to add in the Arcos, I'm coming out of an Arcos bead right there, that first loop, and I'm gonna pick up another Arcos. Instead of facing like a watermelon, it's gonna face like a rainbow this time. Going into the left-hand hole of the rainbow, come out the top, and pour out a couple of your Eidos. When I'm coming out the top, three 15 O's go on the needle, then followed by an 8 three more 15s, let that drop down, and I'm going to go into the right hand side of the rainbow of the Arcos. When you're coming out the bottom of the Arcos, go ahead and go through the next 15 L and the EOS next to where the Arco is going to come out. So through the 15 and the EOS. That's going to pull that Arcos right in next to the EOS and right on top of that 15 L. Coming out the EOS then, I'm going to take my thread and needle out the bottom of the EOS into the top or into the second hole, outer hole of the EOS, coming out the top of the EOS. From there, I get to add on two more EOS beads. To do so, add an EOS on, two 15 0 seed beads, and let that drop down next to the EOS already there. Take it back through the top of that same EOS bead. When you look at it then, it's gonna have the EOS appear like it's laying on an angle right on top of the other one. Grab another EOS, put it on your needle, and go two more 15s, and go from the top hole of this EOS to the bottom hole, and also through the second hole of the baseline EOS. And that creates that little point. To get to the outer edge here, I am going to go through the bottom hole of that same EOS that we've been working on and also through the 15 O that is at the bottom. Give a nice tight pull and that will pull that all together. This is one way right there going through that baseline to keep the outer edge undecorated if you want to with the EOS. If you want to decorate it with the 11s or with the 15s and the 8s, go back through the EOS here. So your thread and needle was coming out the top hole of the EOS. You're going to circle around the EOS that you just added, going into the bottom hole of that first EOS that's part of the V. Go through the two seed beads that sit there already. Add two more 15s, an eight, two more 15s, down the two 15s on the opposite side then. What that's going to do is decorate the outside of the EOS. She has on the design paper both ways, to not decorate or to decorate. So the first way showing you would be coming out of that seed bead right away. The second way is to circle around and add on that little fringe on top of the EOS. To get to the point now to circle around, go through the bottom hole of that EOS as well as the top hole of the innermost EOS. Then back through the bottom hole and through the 15 next to the Arcos. When I'm coming out there, it's time to add my next Arcos in, which again, shaped like a rainbow, up through the left-hand hole of the rainbow. When I'm on the outside, add my three 15s, one eight, three 15s, down the right-hand side of the rainbow there. Also through at that time the 15 L and the next EOS. Pull it nice and tight and that pulls it in so you don't see any extra thread. When I'm coming out the EOS, again I'm coming out the bottom hole. I'm going to reverse my thread to the top hole. 
coming out that top hole then, I get to repeat adding that little pyramid, that little triangle, add my next EOS, two seed beads, go through the top hole of that same EOS, reversing the thread, and the seed beads kind of uh, hide the thread there. Grab my next EOS, two 15s, Go through the bottom hole of that second EOS, as well as through the top hole of that baseline. Pull nice and tight. Then go up through the first hole of that second EOS that you added there. So the first one in the point. And come out. When I'm coming out below the two seed beads, go through the two seed beads. Coming out the seed beads then, add two 15s, one eight, two 15s, and down the 15 on the other side. The thread and needle then goes through the second hole of that same EOS and the first hole of the baseline. From there, jump down to the inner hole of the EOS as well as the 15-0 seed bead. And again, then it's time to put on the Arcos. Not thinking about it, but this one kind of looks like a snowflake. Again, we put on the Arcos, like a rainbow, three 15s, eight, three 15s, down the other right-hand side of the Arcos to connect it together through the 15 and the EOS. I'm gonna go in now and do my little point on the EOS here, add my next crescent, and then I'll explain whether or not you wanna do the point to the EOS or whether or not you want to keep it open at the top. So I've added in my last EOS design here. And the way that Puka has her design, she has it so you come through this Arco speed. That's going to line you up to put on another 15 L. Go through the crystal, starting at the top, through the bottom, a 15 L. And then go ahead and work your thread back to tie your actual needle here. Or tie your two threads off. This is how I did it in the first example, leaving that top open. For the second example here, the one that I'm doing with you, I'm going to close off the top. That will then have me attach, rather than attaching to the second hole of one of the EOS beads here, that'll have me attaching to the actual top hole of one of the 8 OC beads. To do so, I am going to continue just like as if I'm adding my seed beads on. And finish up the pattern just as is. So this will close off the whole pattern creating that nice kind of closed design. So it'll give it a little bit of a different look from the one here. Once I have that outer edge on then, I'll show you how I work back into the middle to put on the extra little crystal. Or I'm sorry, the extra seed beads around the crystal. When I'm coming out the last EOS bead here, I'm going through the 15 and then I'm gonna go through the Arco speed. That Arco speed is gonna bring me out right along the side here that doesn't have any seed beads. You could if you want to leave it exactly like this, just on an angle. Or grab a 15 L, go into the bottom towards the top of the crystal, and then I'll kind of pull it more towards center. Grab another 15 L after going through, and then go to the opposite corner of one of the Arco speeds and kind of pinch your needle in there so that it's going through 
one of those upper corners. Give a little pull, and that'll pull that crystal rondelle then a little bit more towards center, and it'll have the four points of the little seed beads. To end that, I'm simply going to get my needle and thread back through my project so that it's ending right next to one another, and I can burn down and finish the actual thread ends. So just like I have the one here, I brought the thread, snaking it back through the project so I don't see any. And I have the thread ends here, which I'll then take my burner, burn down. Once I have them burned down, I'm then going to actually burn them by balling them up, burning down. And that's going to create basically a little stop, so that way the knot cannot come apart. Once I have the threads back to the same place, I'll show you guys how we take the pendants then. You can see the difference of the look of the pendant closing off the top versus keeping it open. And we'll go in now and we'll add the little tassel and the wire. Once you're done gluing the back of your pendant, you get to add your tassel and your link at the top. I already added the tassel just so you could see a little bit, kind of the technique that we're going to use. And we're going to be using an eye pin, and if you don't have an eye pin, you can use your round nose pliers to simply make an eye pin. And the eye pin is going to connect to one of the 8 OC beads along the baseline. I added an 8 OC bead on it, and then we did a coiled eye pin attaching the actual tassel. The same thing is going to, going to occur right at the top. At the top, same deal. We're going to take that eye pin and our flat nose pliers, open them up just a tiny little bit, go into that last 8 seed bean, and close up that eye pin. If you want to do a coiled eye pin, again, 22 gauge wire is would be my suggestion. Onto that, then I'm going to put one more of my 8 seed beads. So it has that little ending. And I'm gonna make an eye pin that's coiled. However, I have my uh, about 30 inches of my chain here. And that chain I'm gonna link into the loop before I actually finish the coil. To make the loop, I'm gonna turn with my round nose pliers the wire around the loop to create it. If you need help making the loop or knowing how to make the loop, you can watch any of the videos on how to make a coiled eye pin. The loop is created, but then I'm going to take the chain, which it's a fine chain and it has little ends, so I might need to kind of pull it up to me to do. I'm going to slide it on to the extra wire here. If you want it to be a shorter necklace or you want to have a clasp on it, you can simply cut the chain in half doing the same technique, cut it at the back, and then add a clasp. Because this is long enough for me to slip over my head, I'm just adding the chain right on the end. Slide them right over that end, and then those loops of the end of the chain go right into the loop that you created. With your needle nose or your round nose pliers, then you're gonna hold the loop. I'm gonna use my round nose so I can get in there a little bit closer and coil the extra wire. That's gonna make sure that the chain is not coming out of or slipping out of this eye pin. I did the same thing with the coil at the bottom when I attached the tassel. The only difference is instead of adding the chain on, you add the tassel on before you do the, the turning. Take your wire cutters then and simply cut. And then you have your fun little Mino pendant here. You can see the difference in the actual design element of having, let me move my 30 inches of chain kind of here out of the way, um, the difference of the design element of having the bottom, which gives it a more of an antique -y look without the top or with the top. And the color difference always is fun just so you can see what the difference of the actual pieces and pendants look like 
when you're creating them with different colors and different tones. So again, this is the Mino design by Puka um, with her Arcos and her EO speeds and then adding in some little crystals and then I added in the tassel at the bottom. If you do want any of the materials, again, you can go back to the beginning of the menu to a little click down that links to all the different materials or the drop down menu with the description and that little show more button. You can click on that and get any of the materials as well. Again, if you do want the pa the pattern for this, the written pattern, it is in French because Puka is French. Um, so it is in French, but the written pattern for it, it's the Mino pattern. You can add that to your cart if you're shopping with us online or if you're going to your local Potomac Bead Company, just ask them to pull it up for you and you can get the pattern um, with it as well. That way you can follow along both the written pattern and the YouTube video. So I'd like to thank Puka again for allowing me to do the YouTube video to pass on to you guys um, some of her awesome designs and show you and highlight some of those different ways to do some of her designs as well. If you do like this video and others like it, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel so you get regular updates when we have the different videos showing how to do patterns, talking about the new beads like the actual uh, Puka designed beads, and just different things happening here at the Potomac Bead Company. You can also, again, shop with us online at potomacbeads.com. You can interact with us on Facebook and Instagram, and also become a member on Facebook of our group. Um, it's a forum group for beading and jewelry making. Awesome place for design kind of elements and help and fun, and a great way to interact with other customers as well. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and have fun making this Mino design by Puka. Thank you.